Chris, the engineer, has made another garden monorail, so I went to have a look at it. It's 180 feet long, running up and down slopes and around all sorts of curves. The owner isn't keen on you lot knowing where it is, so I'm only showing the rail and not the amazing garden that it is set up in. These railways are cheap to build. They're brilliant for carrying heavy loads over rough ground and they can be picked up and repositioned any time you like. <laughs> there we are. That's a raw sleepers or pads, whatever you like to call them. Mm -hmm. uh, they've just had, in most cases, the burrs ground off the end from cutting them with a nine inch angle grinder and a cutting off stand. To join the rail sections together, we're using ordinary two inch fencing staples, which, staples which are four millimeter wire. So you're drilling like a four and a half or five millimeter hole in here. So this one's a pattern, always write pattern on the pattern, otherwise you end up using it. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, we drill through using the pattern. Oh. And then, <laughs> I was winding them up in the vice earlier on. <laughs> it took a, lot a long quicker. time and was hard work. And why are you doing that? That's so they're more stable on the ground. So you curve them slightly and then they yeah. curve down. Yeah, well worth doing, I reckon. Because when you weld, it will tend to take a tiny bit of that bend out. These monorails are easy to make if you have a welder, but Clever Clogs Chris has come up with a simple jig to make things even quicker. I filmed him in his workshop back in the winter, but I was waiting for the finished railway so I could show you it at the same time. We line the sleeper up with the pad and the stop there has it overhanging 7 eighths of an inch which is about 22 millimetres. That's 30 by 10 the rails and the sleepers are 60 by 6. Oh look, well now what he's doing. Now you do the cramps up until the rail's pressing on the sleepers. Uh -huh. Ah, he's welded on lots of little cramps. He's a smart lad, is our Chris. Done this before. The rails are flat bar on its edge, welded onto flat plates, which are sleepers in this part of the world and ties in the US, I think. Chris's jig makes the setup quicker and more accurate, and it makes the welding really simple. Packing the piece out. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's fallen over. And the point of that is, it's just so much easier to weld, isn't it? When you can, when you're yeah. welding not just on the horizontal, That's it, but it's in pouring into the gap, and it makes it much easier. To weld. Whoa! I've got to go and get the welding rods now. <laughs> The jig is some box iron on a stand set up at a convenient height. The sleeper plates are positioned all along it and then the flat bar is dropped into little holders. The pad overhanging by 22 millimetres instead of the rail. As luck would have it, this bit of scrap angle... <laughs> yeah, it just happens to be perfect, just happens huh? to be perfect. Wow. Yeah. So you have an, um, an overhang at one end and an yeah. underhang at the other end. And we want it fairly square as well. Are oh, you so fussy, you engineer type? Oops. Oops. Oh, perfect. And now everything's handily facing the other way. That's it. So you can weld the other side of everything. That beautiful weld which I'm sure. No, it's perfect. And then you're gonna weld that side of the moor. This is a very neat setup. Done? Yeah, we've we'll just knocked the slag off again. In 
engineering terms, male and female is used a lot. Yep. So each rail has a male end and a female end. This is the female end. So these pegs lock down over the other sleeper and the other rail locks down over that. They need to overlap again by about seven eighths. Everybody at home, <laughs> children, do not do this at home. He's tack welding with his eyes shut. I welded up a whole load of railings on a... <laughs> <laughs> what, with your eyes shut? <laughs> on someone's balcony once, because I'd forgotten the mask, so I did the whole job with my eyes shut. You fool, <laughs> you fool. Lovely. Of course, you don't need this jig. You could just weld these together on the floor. No problem. But this monorail needs 18 lengths and there may well be more to come. Ah. How did you make that bend there, for instance? I jumped up and down on it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Deluxe model. This oh, is yeah. very smart. Yeah. Look at that, this is very fancy. And the aluminium deck is I think look quite a bit lighter than the three quarter ply I used on it the aluminium. It really looks very professional and posh, doesn't it? Oh yeah, you can pull the uninitiated. <laughs> level track you can put six or twelve buckets on whatever. The other beautiful thing about these is a person with one arm can operate one. Try this at home, children. <laughs> I might not be able to do it. You, how? What do you weigh? 120 pounds an hour. Oh, I can go on the flat. Let's try on the hill. <laughs> the hardest bit would be actually slowing somebody down yeah because there's no brakes no. so it's either tip it over <laughs> and everything jams to a halt or just keep going faster and faster <laughs> what fun love it and here's a set of points yep that's just brilliantly simple and mm. sweet and these, these outer ones are just stiffness Okay, they're not doing anything? No, they're just keeping the plate from bending. Oh, just so neat. Yeah. Perfect. 